So I have the story, and it's a very interesting story, of someone who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And uh, she's, she's in her late 60s, and her neurologist diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and memory loss. And uh, she, uh, and she's someone that I've been following for a while. And then we, you know, we cleaned up the diet, healed her gut, and she got a little bit better, but she just wasn't really fully there. Mm -hmm. So um, one day, as I was talking to her, she started breaking down, crying, and, and I was like, "Well, what's 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 the what's the real thing that's going on here?" Yeah. And she's like, "I don't remember, but I know that I'm supposed to be sad right now." And that was very bizarre to me. So what ended up happening is after talking to her family is that 27 years ago she was sexually assaulted and she has been blaming herself for the last 27 years uh, for being raped. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think that contributed to her memory loss because as we started addressing you know, stuff like that and bringing it out there and having, having conquer it instead of uh, holding it back she got significantly better. So what's what's going on in, in human physiology that's making that happen? Mm -hmm, yes, so there's, um, <clears throat> when it comes to trauma, many, many parts of the brain is physiologically changing, caused by trauma, okay? Right. But one in particular, the amygdala, okay? That is hypersensitive, and so. Right, amygdala is the emotional sen uh, center so, of the yes. brain. Yes, this and, is where we process right. emotions, yes. And versus the hippocampus, which is the memory center of the brain. So, yeah, go ahead. Yes, <clears throat> and so in cases where there's extreme trauma, the, the, the person is going to go into fight or flight, Yeah. which is the sympathetic side of the brain. So it's about emotional trauma, right? Not necessarily yes. just physical trauma? No, just fi no. This is em there's a lot of emotional trauma here, okay. obviously, okay? And so there's gonna, the, the body's going to produce a lot of cortisol, mm -hmm excessive amounts of cortisol which is the stress hormone stress hormone and also the crf which is corticotropin releasing hormone which is the brain telling the body to release more stress hormone. correct correct right. and excessive amounts of this eventually the conscious part of the brain where the memory is processed is going to be inhibited mm. okay and that's why you hear people say um i can't remember details of the events but i know it happened so they tend to disassociate themselves from that trauma, okay? And so this is, disassociation means that they separate themselves from the Catch. trauma, but they may subconsciously be sequestering that emotional state into somewhere deeper, never really releasing it, mm -hmm. and they may not even remember the events. Yeah. So yes. in, in the case of this patient who's been suffering for this 27 years, a lot of self-blaming, mm -hmm. She was what I like to call the word we use is happily demented. What I really mean is that she had memory loss, but she was happy about it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but uh, she was happy about it because uh, she didn't really want to remember. But then when her, her when her family comes in and, and talks and says, "Hey, we got some memory issues here, Doc. Let's try to address it," mm -hmm. that is the root of a lot of her her issues with memory. Mm -hmm. Because when you when we looked at her MRIs and all the stuff like that, everything looked pretty normal. But mm -hmm. it was her. It was her trauma that sequestered that was sequestered by the brain mm -hmm. into the deep little pocket mm -hmm. where yeah. that her body chose to, mm -hmm. you know, quote unquote forget it. Mm -hmm. But when we start talking about it, she's like she's crying. Yes. She's like, I'm supposed to be feeling this way. Because something triggered yes. that that area to be sequestered, yeah. to be un, to be open and unboxed. Yes. Yes. Right? What do you think are some of the triggers that people have to to revisit trauma, to re to relive mm. it? So uh, some of these triggers can happen in their environment. It may not necessarily be the actual event that happened in her life, right. but something that is similar to the event. It can even be people that could be triggering that, that deep-seated emotion, emotional pain. But it has nothing to do with that person, right? Or it could just be a simple circumstance. Okay. Okay? So, but... When you see this person going through this pain, it just simply means that they haven't processed that pain yet. That's why they want to they want to forget it because they don't want to relive this pain. So how do you how do you treat someone like that? Okay, so we need to approach this in a mind body style. Okay, okay. we need to we need to integrate the self again. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yes, this person is gonna have to remember these events by 
basically balancing the left and the right hemisphere of the brain. Mm -hmm. And we use mindfulness tools such as Tai Chi and Qigong. Because when you're using Tai Chi and Qigong, you are actually sinking yeah. the brain. Which is kind of a meditative martial arts to yes. connect the mind and the body. Mm -hmm. Another thing too, if this person doesn't remember the past because right. of the trauma, we can use mind-body skills such as guided imagery with drawing, right. okay? Using symbols and metaphors so that if they're not able to communicate this pain, at least we're trying to hit it layer by layer, okay? And so guided imagery and drawings can help that person communicate that pain in, in, in different ways. Right. Okay. So describe what guided imagery is. So guided imagery is, is making use of all of your senses. So it's a guided imagery meditation as opposed to visualization where it only uses the sight, the sense of sight. But imagery is different. <clears throat> Imagery makes use of all the senses and that's what you want to do. You want to engage all of the senses of the body Okay, so that you help that person remember those traumatic events those right. details Well, what's interesting Jenny is you do this in a group setting I do I can't imagine how you do this in a group setting because it seems like everyone's trigger is different Everyone goes through different experiences, right? Mm -hmm. So how in, in, a, in a circle full of trust and in, in the group yes, sessions? Yes. How, how do you achieve this when people yes. have different traumas that are within yeah. there? And I'm really asking this because I'm mm -hmm. thinking to like a, the mm -hmm. veterans population where they're going through different traumas mm -hmm. and they come through here and you're sitting in the group session. Like how, mm -hmm. does, how does that group dynamic work? Yes, so first of all, my job as a mind-body medicine practitioner is to create that container of safe space. Okay. Okay, where there is no judgment from anyone in the space, particularly mm -hmm. No, no judgment from me um, you want to create that space where anyone can share what comes up for them you know you're allowed to bring all of you in this space meaning if you need to cry you can do that you can share as much as you like but you cannot just come once you need to learn all of those different mind-body tools, and that's what I'm doing in the clinic. You know, having all of these group settings so that everybody can learn these tools on how to process their own emotional pains. Yeah, what's really interesting is that people that come out of your sessions and you know they see the other practitioners, they're like, "Whoa, mm -hmm. that was really cathartic." All these memories are are starting to flood back, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of peacefulness that gets mm -hmm. restored. So that someone does not have to sequester this mm -hmm. painful memory mm -hmm. because they've dealt with the memory, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And there's different types of meditations and different types, like yes. you said, the guided imagery yes. that go through that. Yes. And, and so we see them improve. Yes. So on the medical side, the other, the other thing about trauma is that um, when people have traumas they don't even know about, uh, like this person uh, who were sexually assaulted 27 years ago, and she you know, happily forgot, we call it. And, uh, and it, it stimulates other, other traumatic experiences that doesn't, it's not seemingly traumatic to be very traumatic. And so what happens is that um, they reverberate over it. Uh, and so it, they lose sleep. And we know that sleep is, uh, is part of your circadian rhythm. Your circadian rhythm is required for you to retain and make memory. So that she was losing sleep, she was not sleeping at all actually. Yeah. And, uh, and that's really common for someone going through yeah. previous traumas and that they don't even know about. Yep. And uh, what's, what's also interesting is that, you know, when she, the, the, the day that she pulled this out of her, she's able to cry and express her emotionality, was also the day that she slept eight hours straight, which hadn't yep. happened in like 27 years for her. That's right. Right? Yep. And so, and I mean, this, this, this lady was on sleep aids, she was on like a million different things. Yes. <laughs> right? Yes. And, uh, and, Nothing allowed her that good quality sleep and, and yep. most sleep aids by the way like uh, different medications Actually, they do put you to sleep. But you don't get good quality sleep. You mm -hmm. don't get that stage four restorative sleep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so but once she's able to do that she gets a good quality sleep And then now I'm hearing you know the stories of other patients saying hey, I'm using guided imagery I'm sleeping for the <laughs> first time in 20 yes. years yeah. of eight yeah. hours straight of yes. this uh, other gentleman. He's, he's yes. uh, about 82 83 years old yep. And uh, he's he's telling me that story, and then and then we're having success stories of people just who have been a long journey to figure out what's going on with their health, mm -hmm. 
they develop the distrust of the medical system. Uh, but but when we put them with you for the mind body mm -hmm. sessions, all that trauma starts coming out. Yes. And all of the wrong that has been done by other people onto them mm -hmm. becomes a less of an issue because it was not something that people were doing wrong. It's no. just, it was just the same triggers yeah. that are causing yeah. a cascade of emotionality exactly. to happen from a trigger way back when. Yeah. So the point of all the mind body medicine group classes is to help the patients become more aware of these triggers. Right. And that to help them separate that those triggers have nothing to do with the environment that's that they're in that may be triggering all of these emotional pains. Right. Okay, they're learning how to be more aware. That's what that is. Mind body medicine is all about self awareness, uh -huh. right? Self awareness of their thoughts, emotions, and also making them more aware of how they can manage their own stress. Right. And so when well, I, I've I've heard patients say, I thought I didn't have stress. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> you know? I thought I didn't have stress. Oh, my God. Yeah. But all of my classes are designed to go from the top layer of the person and going in deep so that they actually see, oh, my gosh, I do have some stress. Right, absolutely. And it, and it shows on the test results, and every, right? Everyone, everyone has some level yes. of stress. Mm -hmm. But, you know, let's say I, you know, earlier in the... In the in the brain mastermind that we had here, mm -hmm. uh, live at Texas Center for Lifestyle Medicine, I was showing people different images, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, you can have an image of New York City in the Empire State Building with the suns in the background that look very beautiful. The next image is the Twin Towers during 9-11, and one of them is mm. up in smoke. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's still New York, two very different images. Yes. The people who have gone through previous trauma that's related to 9-11, will look at the first image of the beautiful Empire State Building and think of the second image mm -hmm. of the Twin Towers and the billowing smoke. Yes. Right, because they've been through that trauma. Yes. So, oh my God, New York City's Empire State Building yep. triggered me to think about 9-11. Yeah. Whereas most of the people in the room are like, oh, that's beautiful, it's Empire State Building, you know, I wanna, I wanna visit. Yeah. And, uh, and there's another session where I looked at, I, I showed pictures of um, uh, a snowy path, right? Mm -hmm. And the patient's like, wow, that's really beautiful, and everything's white. And for yeah. me, I'm like, no, that's not beautiful, because that <laughs> looks like when I had my snowboarding accident, and I was knocked uh -huh. unconscious and lost three days of memory, and I was bleeding all over the place, yes. trail of blood behind me on the snow. And so it made, it made my heart go like this, while other people were like, ah, right? And so you never know how people or what people are triggered. You know, I, I call it the, uh, the road rage phenomenon. You know, sometimes people get road rage, and their road rage doesn't, may not have anything to do with the actual traffic, but what that traffic represented for them from some yes. time in the past before. And I think a lot of people with actually memory yes. loss have these underlying issues that they don't even know about. Yes, so. happens in relationships. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you, if you, ha if you had a recent breakup and uh, another person is coming through in your life, right? Yeah. Entering your life, but this person kind of reminded you of that person in the past that you right. had a breakup with. Right. But this person is not trying to help you. It's just, it reminded you of that person. Right. That triggers an emotion. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, yep. Well, thanks for joining us. Hope you, uh, hope you like what we have to say. Thank you. There's going to be a whole lot more going on. Mm -hmm. um, but the relationship between the mind and the body and connecting the mind and body is significantly important to healing all diseases, especially yes. when we talk about memory loss yes. and uh, depression and anxiety. All right. Thank you.